Martin Coddington's. Now that's a good movie. This is Martin Coddington. Uh, we're going to talk about last year at Mirenbad today. This is our first episode, so I chose a movie I've seen before. Uh, we'll probably try to steer clear of that in the future. Uh, even though I've seen this movie before, every time like it changes a little bit for me. Uh, the storytelling is intentionally obtuse. Um, there are plenty discuss- of discussions about what the movie is actually about. Um, I don't know that necessarily it's important to adhere to one version of what the story might be about. I think part of the beauty of the movie is that it changes with each viewing and changes with per viewers and like through discussion and conversation. I think all great art um, challenges us to have those conversations. It's it's a beautifully filmed movie, all black and white, uh, takes place. I think it's three different hotels that it's filmed in. Um, the architecture is beautiful and it is constantly tracking through these hallways and like different corridors and rooms. And it quickly becomes apparent that we're like trapped in this endless maze of corridors and rooms. Um, for me, this movie is, um, it's about a woman who's trapped in this like kind of nightmare. Uh, and this man who's um, stalking her essentially through these hallways and keeps assuring her that they've like met a year before at Mirenbad and uh, is trying to convince her that uh, they're in love and that they should run away together. Through the movie, it's it's very unclear as to whether she actually remembers this if it actually in fact happened or if he's just a crazy person. Um, And I think that the way that the movie um, shows like the other people, the other guests uh, staying at the hotel as these like kind of silent statues through each of the corridors um, kind of helps in this like dream state that we feel like we're wandering through. Um, because since they don't react or have like their own personalities, we're kind of dependent on our two characters interpretations of the events that occurred. Um, mostly the movie is narrated by the male character. Um, and he is unreliable at best. So we can't really believe anything that he says. And as he recounts the tales of how they met the first time, um, she's uh, performing or reenacting like his tellings of like how they met, but she isn't, she isn't performing them the way he's describing them. So he says that she looked at the bed and she's looking at the wall in the scene or um, there are other scenes too where, Um, he insists that, you know, she didn't take a single step further and then she takes a step further in the like flashback scene. Um, and so while he narrates, she acts. And so we don't really hear a lot of dialogue from her throughout the movie, but we mostly have to go off of like how she's performing the scenes. Um, And I think one of the other interpretations is that like he keeps insisting that that like when they met the first time they had an affair and that he didn't force her and there keeps being flashbacks to scenes of her screaming and like flashbacks to her saying no, no, no. 
Uh, and so it's hard to say whether that like this encounter even happened. If it did, it was rape and she doesn't even remember any of it. So once again, it could have not happened or she's simply repressing like this awful event that happened to her. Um, I think that it's a very like real way to tackle sub that subject matter um, because our own emotions are so hard to define um, day to day. And I think that like portraying a, it in a movie in a way that is hard for us to follow or track or like understand what anything actually is, is a more human way of um, seeing it or um, being able to react to it. I think that like even the end of the movie where um, she leaves her husband, uh, it, it almost feels like, cause by this point in the movie, this scene plays out almost too well. Unlike the rest of the movie where I think now are uh, the man has given fully over to the fantasy that like she's going to leave her husband for him and like they're going to live happily ever after in her his mind um or i mean like at this point like i mean she could even be dead at this point we don't know because um tonally it just shifts um because it's it or for me at least it just feels like things are happening as described. Whereas like the rest of the movie has been like this, uh, give and take kind of situation where nothing's like quite as clear until this like final scene. Um, but yeah, it's a fascinating movie. Um, and I think that the more people who watch it can add to the conversation. Uh, and I think that like, it's a great movie for the fact that we can continue to discuss what it's actually about. Um, dissect it even further. Cause there's so much subject matter to tackle. And, uh, you know, I would just, uh, challenge anybody to watch it and like engage or watch any film and engage with it. Um, and just see what you get out of it. But yeah, so this is going to be our show. Um, and we're going to try to try to dissect movies and um, and just kind of see how we feel about them uh, or I feel about them. Or maybe we'll have some guests on it show and see how we feel uh, about movies as a group. Um, so thanks for watching.